in this part of the video we're actually going to start to make our frame there's our drawing simple drawing like I said you can download this from the link that I've listed below um, and it's a very basic drawing because it's a very very basic thing these are the posts that we uh, went to home base to buy and these will make a good sturdy frame so we've got a couple of measurements to to make here our first one is 810 millimeters and that will form both of these sides so we need two cuts at 810 millimeters and we'll mark that now obviously the carpenters out there are going to have their own way of doing things I'm dropping those marks around so that I can then put my marking gauge on and still see where the mark is and I'm going to mark three sides of this And what I'll do is I'll do one of these on my chop saw, but I'll do one for the benefit of those who have not done this before. I'll do one with using a hand saw, just to give you a couple of tips on how to keep the thing straight. This one I think I'll do on the chop saw because there's a knot right where I want to cut the uh, cut the timber and the electric saw will go through that a lot more easier than I will with a hand saw okay so I'm going to pop that one out of the way now to help me with this I'm going to use a thing called a bench hook and all that is is a piece in this case it's a chipboard with a block nailed on the bottom and that block nailed on the bottom stops it going any further that way it locks it against the bench then there's a block on the top which has been cut short of the width of the baseboard now I'm left handed so in my case I've left this side short so that I can saw against that if you're right handed this block will go flush with this side leaving a gap there so that you can use this edge as a good edge for your alignment okay so there's just a little tip for you now I'm gonna when I cut this if I leave this as it is there's no support under this end I'm likely to end up cutting it um, cutting it odd so I'm just gonna get a piece of timber place that underneath and that's brought that up nice and flush now this line wants to align just slightly this side of my end block and using a tenon saw we'll start the cut now an old carpenter showed me a way of making sure that I was cutting at a dead right angle and I'm not sure that if you'll be able to put this up in the film or not but if you look at the reflection of the wood this piece of wood it should continue through in a straight line from your saw um, and, and if it does that ensures that you're not twisting either way or um, cutting it out of alignment so now let's just move that slightly more and we're going to start our car start off lightly and again I know the old carpenters will be saying you shouldn't be blowing the sawdust etc but I'm afraid my means are a little bit limited and I'm cutting slightly to the left of that line as well and I'm watching the saw as I'm going through and watching it cutting on the line tight 
on that. What I could have done is just applied a little bit of candle wax to the saw and that would have helped it go through. And as you can see, although that will need a sand off, we've got a fairly nice square cut uh, in, in that and that's how you do it with a hand saw. And to do this using the chop saw, again I've supported my timber at one end so it brings the timber level with the plate of the drop saw. I will bring my saw down to start with and just gauge to make sure that my blade is cutting and just leaving the line in. Again, another good square cut. <coughs> the next measurement that we need to cut is 550 millimeters. Each of these has got a label pinned on the end of it from home base, so I'm leaving that bit, cutting that bit off. 500 and 50 millimeters. One. And there's two. It shouldn't make any difference on this, but when you're cutting somewhere near to the centre of a piece of timber, it's always handy to mark either one side or the other, it doesn't matter. And in this case, I'm just going to put a small light cross on there, and that will tell me that's the bit that I don't want. We're doing the same again, dropping that down either side. My square is being used off of the same side each time and I chose that side because it's the better side on the timber to be honest with you to drop my marks down from and to subsequently cut uh, what I need And these two I'll actually cut on the chop saw rather than cutting by hand. Okay. Right, so with all four cut the very next thing that I want to do is just take a piece of sandpaper and take off those uh, bits of sawdust splinters from the saw cut because they can get in the way of actually getting the wood to join together Squarely. Plus, I don't really want to leave bits of uh, splinters of wood for when uh, the boss uses this loom and ends up with a nasty splinter in her finger. So I'm just now cleaning those up as is. And so that's our four pieces of wood. The next job that we've got to do is we've got to find the centre of that timber. We can do it either using the off cut or using one of these. We'll need to measure across the width, and in this case, it's 44 millimeters. 44 millimeters. Okay. Now there's two ways of doing this. To set this, this is a marking gauge. You can either attempt, although it's very fiddly, attempt to 
measure down half of the 44 which will give you halfway into the timber All right so that would be 22 but it can be a little bit fiddly and does take a little bit of practice particularly as your tools are getting older okay that would be one way of doing it the other way is to set the gauge roughly at halfway and then using an off cut just make a mark in your timber do the same again going from the other side now you'll see there there are two dots which means that this needs to be adjusting so that the pin on this lines up in between those two dots And there you are, bang on central. Now we're going to mark a line straight down the centre of our timber. And we're going to do that by pulling this towards us. This face needs to go hard against there. And hopefully that should produce a reasonably straight line straight through our timber. And we're going to do that four times. This is our nail line. So we, which will help us to get all of the nails in absolutely straight and in the centre of the timber. take a pencil and we mark through the center of the groove that we've just put onto here it's going to make life a little bit easier for us when we're trying to align our nails and again we're going to do that with each one And now we're going to fit some of these brackets. There's our four times thirty screws, and I'm actually going to use a, an electric screwdriver. And this bit's not rocket science. We're going to place that in there and just give it a couple of twists to give it a start. Now, before I put the rest of the screws into that, I'm just going to check that it's flush, and it is indeed flush. I can now just assist those screws by using my bridle. And doing the same again. They would probably go straight into the timber, but it's much easier if you can just guide that screw in and give it a couple of turns to start with. It just makes it less tricky to, to start rather than starting from scratch.
there you go our brackets fitted to the ends okay we now need to transfer some marks onto our side pieces and what I'm going to do is lay my piece of timber with the brackets on it against it then I'm going to use a piece of timber using the edge of the timber against it to make sure that we're sitting flush okay this time I'm going to mark the first hole with a pencil okay I can now take my bradle and mark that first hole uh, help that first screw put my bracket in back into position and this can be a bit tricky let's see if we can do that screw up and there's our first making our right angle on our corner okay same principle you might want to just stand that up because it will make it easier and just check that your timber is flush either side and then with your bridle pop a hole in there pop a hole in there And there we go and we literally repeat that in each of the corners Now we've got all four corners joined together this is our top you might just be able to pick out on your video our lines that we marked out here we need to fit these brackets to the back so the first thing we need to do is flip our frame over like so okay now we also need to mark in a center line again and it's quite simple to do on on these to be honest with you okay 
you're simply going to pull that through there. The same down at this end, I don't know if you can see that. Turn that frame round. One through there. And one through there. And then these brackets need to be fitted to our ends. This will stop the thing from going out of square. That should keep it nice and square rather than it going because when um, when you start to actually put the wool onto there you can put it under quite a bit of pressure so it's basically belt and braces as it were and these will simply use those lines as a guide for where our screw centers go it's as simple as that and once again we'll mark just the one okay and we'll get a screw into that to get that secured lovely I think that might want to come around just to just ease that screw back a little bit come around so that's central same with this one Slightly less screws in this one actually. And these two. This one is actually coming a little bit close to the where the two pieces of wood join so I'm going to angle that inward slightly uh, to avoid splitting the wood and there you go and then we've just got to repeat that on each of the four corners <laughs> so far nice and square in each of the corners reinforcement so you really got a good strong product there okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to mark out where our nails are going there are a couple of ways of doing this you can either use a steel rule I wouldn't recommend using a tape measure simply because of movement because you're going to be working from a line here and not on the end and you'll end up having to do a lot of complicated maths etc etc just to get it right um, so a steel rule and even that for me is not the most perfect way because each of these nails is going to be set apart at, at 35 millimeters and um, 
therefore you've got to be able to do the, the maths on there. So what I've done is I opted to use a pair of dividers now, which I showed in the uh, um, beginning of the video as, as optional. And this is where they're really going to come in use personally for me. But it's your choice. If you're kind of good at mental arithmetic, then it might be all right to use one of these. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to set this at 35 millimeters and the way I do this is I start at 10 and then open this up so, so that it reads to 135 millimeters okay it's no good starting at the beginning for a start at the beginning of my steel roll I've got a, a lump out of it but if I actually put that there and extend that over it actually only reads 34 mil so I start this on the 10, uh, 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters, and, it, and uh, open this second leg out via the screw to 35 millimeters. I can then <coughs> set this at this union and mark that across at the 35 mil intervals and when you do this you should always make your start from the same end so once I've actually got through this lot I'll go down the other end As you see, comes out there, bang. Right, I'll go down the other end and I'll do exactly the same from this end. Okay, so we've marked down the sides, and then we're going to mark off each and every one of these down the edge. Okay, so this is the pack of the nails we bought uh, when we bought the brackets, etc. And I've just for convenience, I've popped them into a into a box. And so now I'm going to start doing my nail up. So I've uh, I've got a nail gauge. There is another video uh, <clears throat> on my channel that shows you how I made this. And all this is to is to make sure that we're going to get them. Uh, this doesn't really make them upright, but it makes sure that we get them exactly the same depth, okay? So it doesn't really matter where I start now. I'm going to start in this corner, as a matter of fact. Just start 
banging it in. I'm going to put my nail gauge on there. And just make sure that that's level. And there you are, one loom, one cup of coffee, uh, ready to go, I shall now get this to Jane, and she will start threading it, and by tomorrow I expect we'll have a, another blanket. Um, I, it's, you might find that when you bang these nails in, that some of them are not, 100% straight really don't I spoke to Jan about this don't worry too much about whether they're absolutely upright or not um, the difference it makes is, is negligible so there you go there's your finished frame